Thanks, David. I'm ecstatic to be here. Uh, we're here to talk about the XBRL story, and because I am a lawyer and former bureaucrat, all I really know is, is Washington and the way of the bureaucrats, and so I'm here to tell you the DC side of it, the DC story. I'll be fast. The basic message is that the federal government, with a few more pushes, is on the cusp of adopting consistent data reporting standards across many different areas, uh, most of which are relevant to accountants. The SEC mandate is what most of us know. I became an employee of the SEC in July of 2008, a member of the uh, 21st Century Disclosure Initiative, whose job it was to simplify the substantive side of corporate securities disclosure reporting. The task force failed because SEC employees generally want more complexity. That allows them to go to Simpson Thatcher or KPMG and make bank after they finish making just 200 grand at the SEC. But our task force realized that the SEC doesn't need substantive simplification in order to make it much cheaper to be a public company or raise capital in the public markets. All we need is electronic structure because we realized in 2008 and 2009, if the SEC were to adopt consistent electronic tr structure for securities disclosures, then the problems of the substantive complexity would go away. Then it would be possible for somebody to invent the TurboTax of electronic securities disclosure, and those interfaces would do the job that expensive lawyers and accountants are doing now. The SEC's movement toward XBRL for public company financial statements is the first step, but as our task force realized then, and as the Financial Industry Transparency Act, which I later wrote working for Congress, will mandate, the SEC needs to add structure to everything. Instead of filing simultaneous XBRL formatted files and HTML formatted files, companies should be tagging everything. They should be tagging their financial statements, they should be tagging their executive compensation disclosures, they should be tagging their Cybrain's Oxney representations, they should be tagging their MDNAs, they should be tagging their descriptions of business, they should be tagging their risk disclosures. It should all be one system. There should be one system of tags. We have Justin Bieber concert. Bieber concert. Anyway, that's the backdrop of the work that I've been doing for about four years. The SEC has not moved toward that transformation. They have been content with tagging only the financial statements. And so I left the SEC. I walked up Capitol Hill with my resume. I went into Chairman Dice's office and I said, I know about XBRL. I want you to hire me. Two hours later, his staff called me. Beginning in October 2009, Chairman Dice and I worked together to move the SEC from the congressional vantage point uh, toward adopting consistent structure uh, more consistently. The result of that was the Financial Industry Transparency Act, which I've spoken to many of you about before. It'll require the SEC to tag everything. It'll also require the CFTC, the OCC, the Fed, and the Office of National Insurance to tag everything. It almost became part of Dodd-Frank. For various political reasons, it did not. But uh, in the last two weeks, I've learned that Chairman Issa intends to reintroduce it. We're laying the groundwork for the Financial Industry Transparency Act. We're working with the current SEC staff on that project and with the support of the private sector, the coalition that I've been trying to build, and the support of both parties in Congress, we believe we're moving toward consistent XBRL tagging for all securities disclosures. Everything that is filed under the 33 Act, the 34 Act, and both 1940 Acts. It doesn't stop with securities disclosure. Federal spending is about to convert to structured financial to a structured financial format. Uh, in June 2011, Chairman Issa introduced the Data Act, or Digital Accountability and Transparency Act. Actually, the acronym does not work. Uh, does it irk anybody else that uh, DSW Shoe Warehouse is actually Discount Shoe Warehouse Shoe Warehouse? <laughs> it, it, it irks me. Or almost as bad as a automatic teller machine machine. Uh, the, the Data Act has that problem. Um, our, our, the uh, communications shop at the House Oversight Committee uh, decided that Digital Accountability and Transparency Act was a great name for the bill. Uh, the only trouble is, if you say data, nobody can tell from your diction that that is an acronym. So you have to say Data Act, and thus we have the acronym that doesn't quite work. But what does quite work is the spending oversight system that was part of the stimulus, part of the Recovery Act, uh, in which recipients 
must file reports on how they spend federal grants and contracts. Right now that exists only under the stimulus, but the Data Act will expand that to all federal spending and will impose, for the first time, consistent identifiers and markup languages for all filings that grantees and contractors make with the government. Beyond grantees and contractors, the Data Act also requires agencies to tag all their obligations and disbursements and report them to the same central platform. That means under the Data Act, we have a single electronic platform that describes all grants, all contracts, and all internal spending in one structured and standardized format across the board. The Data Act passed the House in April. Yesterday, young Tom and Skip joined me in a briefing for the still skeptical Senate. There is opposition, don't get me wrong, there is opposition to data tagging on the Senate side. Uh, Tom and Skip fought the fight with me yesterday. The opposition is increasingly isolated and increasingly, increasingly transparently political, and we can get more into that when we do our strategy session later on. We've got to defeat some senators, essentially. Uh, it doesn't end with federal spending information. Most of you know what SBR is. There are some shining examples overseas. Uh, as I talk to more people in the XBRL community, uh, more and more of them are convinced that it actually is possible. When regulatory agencies come together and agree on a single data dictionary, then change happens. Then regulatory requirements can be coordinated. Then some smart person, maybe somebody in this room, looking at the hood sons here, I'm shamelessly buttering you up, uh, Hood Senior. Uh, some, maybe somebody in this room will invent the TurboTax of regulatory reporting. Uh, once we have a consistent uh, data dictionary for regulatory concepts, uh, the way Gianluca has already begun to accomplish in Australia, once we have that consistent dictionary, once the agencies who hate each other are forced to move along, join together, and adopt consistent identifiers, uh, then those interfaces and that larger application will be possible. Now, how does all this happen? We need advocacy. Uh, none of this will happen. Uh, it's an interesting story when you talk about standards that the government embraces because it involves both government decision makers and private industry. Uh, government the Politicians are not about to embrace the concept of standardization until they know the private sector wants it. The private sector is not about to want it until they know it's possible in the government. So building the Data Transparency Coalition, I've had to try to tell two half-truths, two semi-truths at the same time. I've had to tell the staff members of congressmen and senators, hey, the, the, the private sector, the financial industry is very excited if you introduce XBRL legislation. Then I've had to go to the tech companies and say, be excited. This is what XBRL legislation can do for you. The challenge, of course, is that most of the companies that work in this space don't fully understand the implications of massive standardization across the board. They don't understand how they could help all of their clients find tremendous efficiencies and transparency and accountability with standards. The thing to do is to get inside those companies and find the engineers find the geeks, find the nerds, uh, the people who are actually doing the work of those companies. Talking to the PR folks, uh, no offense to those who work on PR in this room, talking to the PR folks who work for large tech companies, talking to the government relations staff, you get nowhere. So in order to tell those two half-truths and make them whole truths, in order to simultaneously tell government decision makers and uh, tech companies that standards are happening, uh, you've got to get to people who work for the government and will embrace standards, and people who work for those companies and will embrace standards. I've been lucky enough to find some of those geeks inside some of these companies. The Data Transparency Coalition is coming together. It's going to be the private sector voice for standards. That's all I have to say. <laughs>